we're going to solve the initial value problem using the method of substitution. Looking at the notes below, we've learned about some general substitutions, Bernoulli equations, and homogeneous differential equations. Analyzing the differential equation, notice how we have natural log x minus natural log y, which we can simplify using the quotient property of logarithms. Let's first write the differential equation as xy prime equals y times natural log of x divided by y. Notice now if we divide both sides by x, we have y prime equals y divided by x times natural log of x divided by y. It'd be better if we had natural log of y divided by x. So let's go back to the differential equation and factor in negative one from the right side. Let's write the differential equation as x times y prime equals negative y times the quantity natural log y minus natural log x. And now let's go ahead and divide both sides by x and write natural log y minus natural log x as natural log y divided by x. This gives us y prime equals negative y divided by x times natural log of y divided by x. In this form, we can more easily see the right side is a function of y divided by x, and therefore we have a homogeneous differential equation. And therefore, we will let v equal y divided by x, and y prime is equal to v plus x v prime. So again, we have v equals y divided by x, and y prime is equal to v plus x times v prime. And now let's perform substitution. Again, the left side y prime is equal to v plus x v prime. And the right side is now negative v natural log of v. And now we do have a separable differential equation. Let's begin by subtracting v on both sides of the equation, which gives us x times, let's write v prime as dv dx equals negative v natural log v minus v. And now let's factor negative v from the right. And now we want the v's on the left and the x's on the right, which gives us negative one over v times natural log of the quantity v plus one dv equals one over x dx. The next step is integrate both sides of the equation. I'm gonna go ahead and factor out the negative. To integrate on the left, we need to perform u substitution, where we'll let u equal natural log of v plus one, and therefore differential u is equal to one divided by v dv. If we write the integral in terms of u, we have negative one over v dv is equal to du, giving us the integral of one over u du which is equal to negative natural log absolute value of u plus c. In our case though, we can leave off the absolute value because notice both x and y are positive and therefore v is also positive, which in terms of v gives us negative natural log of natural log v plus one, since u is equal to natural log v plus one. We'll include the constant on the right, equals on the right we have natural log x plus a constant, we'll call that c sub one. And now we need to work on solving for v. Let's first multiply both sides of the equation by negative one, which gives us natural log of the quantity natural log v plus one equals negative natural log x minus c sub one, plus let negative c sub one be equal to c sub two, and write the right side as negative natural log x plus c sub two. Before we exponentiate both sides of the equation with the base of e, Let's move this negative, or negative one if we want, to the exponent position on the x. This gives us natural log of the quantity natural log v plus one equals natural log of x to the power of negative one plus c sub two. And let's continue on the next slide. Next we exponentiate both sides of the equations with a base of e. On the left we have natural log v plus one equals we can write the right side as e to the power of natural log x to the power of negative one times e to the power of c sub two because we have a sum in the exponent position. e to the power of c sub two is just some constant which we will call c. And e to the power of natural log x to the power of negative one simplifies to x to the power of negative one 
giving us natural log of v plus 1 equals x to the power of negative 1 times c, or c times x to the power of negative 1. And now we'll subtract 1 on both sides, which gives us natural log of v equals, let's write c, x to the power of negative 1 as c divided by x, and then we have minus 1. And now to solve for v, we'll exponentiate both sides of the equation again with a base of e. e to the power of natural log v is equal to v, giving us v equals e raised to the power of c divided by x minus 1. And now we need to write this back in terms of x and y by replacing v with y divided by x. This gives us y divided by x is equal to e to the power of c divided by x minus 1. To solve for y, we multiply both sides by x, which gives us y equals x times e to the power of c divided by x minus 1. So this is the general solution, and now we'll determine the particular solution using the initial condition y of 1 equals 4. So if y of 1 is equal to 4, we substitute 1 for x and 4 for y, which gives us 4 is equal to 1 times e to the power of c divided by 1 minus 1. Simplifying, we have 4 is equal to e to the power of c minus 1. Next, we'll take the natural log of both sides of the equation to solve for c. This gives us natural log of 4 equals natural log of e raised to the power of c minus 1. Simplifying, we have natural log 4 is equal to c minus 1 on the right. Adding 1 to both sides, we have c is equal to natural log of 4 plus 1. Now that we know c, we know the particular solution is y equals x times e raised to the power of c divided by x minus 1, where c is natural log 4 plus 1. This gives us an exponent of natural log 4 plus 1 divided by x, and then minus 1. And let's go ahead and check this graphically. Here we have the graph of the particular solution in black. Notice how it fits nicely in the slope field, and also passes through the point 1 comma 4, given by the initial condition. I hope you found this helpful.